Strap in for another exciting ride on the Manfin rocket ship. I'm your pilot, Dr. E. Today's ride, homework six returns. Returns. What is the short formula for return on assets? What is it? Net income divided by average total assets. Net income divided by average total assets. See if I have my handy dandy writing utensil. Return on assets, net income divided by average total assets, and that is beginning total assets plus ending total assets for the year divided by two. All right, what are the two components of return on assets? Profitability, profitability, which is the net profit margin percentage, which we just calculated in homework five, um, times uh, efficiency, which is the total asset turnover ratio. Okay? What is the short formula for return on equity? The short formula is net income divided by average total owner's equity, okay? And that is usually less preferred equity. You, typically, you will subtract out preferred stock. Sometimes it's called return on common equity. All right, what are the three components of return on equity? Like uh, return on assets, it's profitability and it's efficiency. But there's a third component, leverage. And what you're using here for leverage is the equity multiplier or equi equity turnover, which is average assets divided by average equity. That's the turnover ratio or the or leverage ratio that you use. Okay? Why is return on equity often higher than return on assets? And the answer is leverage. You borrow money which brings in more capital which you then wisely invest to generate higher cash flow and it increases your returns. Okay? You can, do, you can grow your company faster and larger by borrowing money. As long as the return that you earn on your investment is higher than the interest expense that you pay on your borrowing. Okay? And that's what we're trying to do in business. You want your return to be greater than your cost. That is what business is. Okay, is it better to have um, a high or rising return on assets or return on equity or low uh, declining multiples? Obviously, high or rising return on assets and return on equity are much, much better. They indicate an improving operating environment for a company, which means that you can charge higher prices and maybe get lower, uh, pay lower costs. Uh, it also implies better management. Management is doing a better job of operating the company, a better job of um, profitability, a better job of efficiency, and a better job of balancing the capital structure, debt and equity. Okay. Either way, a company that generates higher returns is more valuable, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to maximize the value of the company. 
which component of DuPont ROE, and that's what this is, this is DuPont ROE. This is the DuPont formula for ROE. It breaks ROE down into three components. Instead of just two components, it's three components, profit, efficiency, and leverage, so that we can see what is taking place, why is our return on equity changing like it's changing? Is it due to changes in profitability, changes in efficiency, or changes in leverage? Which component of DuPont ROE is the least attractive and the least sustainable way to increase your ROE? So, if you want to increase your ROE, then you have to increase either this, this, or this, or some component, some combination of this. So, which is the best way to Im improve your ROE, the most sustainable way, the way that analysts in the marketplace likes? I, I would say probably profit margin, number one. Second, efficient, efficiency, improve your efficiency. The least uh, desirable way to improve your uh, return on equity is by adding leverage because there's a limit and you add leverage and you're also adding a lot of fixed costs and a lot of risk, okay? Okay, so let's shift into doing some calculations. Give me a minute to erase the board here. Don't go anywhere. Don't get up and go to the refrigerator and grab an ice cold beverage. Don't do that. All right. Don't make me call the dean of students on you. Dr. E's a tattletale. I'll do it. All right. So let's do, let's see where I'm, let's do return on assets, ROA, ROE, then let's do net profit margin percentage, and total asset turnover, and equity turnover, and DuPont. ROE. Okay? Alright, so to do this, we need a balance sheet and an income statement. And I only have the income statement, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to give you the answers for two years, 17 and 16. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go and do the calculations yourself. But I'll give you an idea of what they look like. So return on assets in 2017 is 6.62%. Return on equity is 20.88%. The difference between this and this, leverage. Net profit margin percentage. 6.47%. Total asset turnover, 1.0238. The equity turnover, 3.1532. If you multiply this times this times this, you will get 20.88%, or something very, very close, because DuPont and short form ROE have to equal the same. Okay? 2016, 6.9%. Return on equity, 26.19%. Net profit margin percentage, 6.95%. Total asset turnover. 0.9935 equity turnover 3.7947 and return on equity 26.19 so what we see happening in 2017 versus 2016 is a return on equity went from 26% to 21%, and that is a huge decline. The question is, why? 
So, breaking it down into the three components, we will be able to see. So, their, their profitability went down. Why? Okay, and we saw uh, in, in uh, homework five that their um, gross profit margin percentage dropped. We're not sure why, but we have to ask management that question. It's either pricing, or it's cost of goods sold, or it's mix. All right, and we saw that um, their interest expense went up too, but the GPM, the gross profit margin decline, is what's most responsible for this. And then their efficiency turned up just a bit, and that is either because they generated more sales or they might have sold some property plant equipment. But the ratio of sales to um, assets improved a little bit. All right, but look at here. Their leverage dropped big time. So the drop in leverage, their equity turnover went way down from here to here. That means they reduced their leverage. And that is what's most responsible for the decline. Now, as an investor trying to ascertain the risk of the company, am I really upset that their return on equity went down because they reduced their leverage? And the answer is no. Now, if it, I would be really upset if return on equity went down because their profitability dropped big time and their efficiency dropped. Now, I am concerned that the company's profit, profitability dropped. But I, I appreciate the fact that management's working hard to turn over their assets, okay? And I appreciate the fact that they're paying debt down, okay? But I am concerned, so my concern is right here, right here, based on what I'm seeing, okay? As an analyst, as an investor, I want to know what's going on here. And it could be a change in mix. Maybe their asset turnover went up, not because they, they sold property, plant, and equipment, but because they grew their sales. How did they grow their sales? They might have grown their sales by selling more low margin items. Maybe they introduced a new product that has a lower margin. Okay? And so what you have to try to maximize is the balance between profits and efficiency. So right now, the question would be, um, which is having a bigger impact on the company? The drop in margin or the increase in efficiency, okay? So that's a discussion to have with management. And then you look at this and go, okay, I'm okay with them. Because here's what they're saying. We're paying debt off. And you say, why, do you, why are you paying debt off? Because we want to be able to borrow more in the future because we're looking at making a couple of acquisitions which are really going to grow the company. Oh, man. That's awesome. There you have it. Dr. E says, peace out, shalom.